What's going on YouTube? It's Blood Sweating Gears 87. Um, about two weeks ago, I took a trip to New Mexico and I went on a pronghorn hunt. It was amazing. It was one of the best hunts that I've ever been on, period. I'm actually excited to go back to New Mexico to try to do this again, maybe next year. But um, I went out there, I booked a hunt, a three day hunt with True Grit Trophy Outfitters. And I had an amazing time. It, it was ridiculous. Um, we saw a ton of pronghorn. Uh, on day one, we were going after them all day. I believe we might have walked like five miles on day one. But we just couldn't seal the deal on day one. I'll, I'll bring some footage of that hunt to you guys in just a second. But uh, on day one, I know we saw it had to be like 80 pronghorn. And we were looking for a mature buck. We, uh, we saw a really nice one early in the morning but he was literally like a mile away from us. You'll see in the video how wide open it is out there. And he was so far away from us, we just, he was out of there like instantly. He was chasing another smaller buck and there was no chance of getting that one. But uh, throughout the course of the day, we saw several, several bucks, several does. And at the end of the day, we kind of set up on another really nice one, but um, it just didn't work out. I'll show you guys some of that in the video, but it, it, it just didn't work out. And the following morning, it happened so fast that I didn't have the camera ready. So I didn't get all of that hunt. I have the aftermath on here and I'll bring that to you guys, the aftermath of day two. Um, day one, we were out all day, walked five miles, didn't happen. Day two, we went out and it happened within the first hour. And, and the buck that I tagged, I believe is the same one that we saw the first morning. I didn't get footage of him because he was like a mile away, but we could see him through the spotting scope. And I'm almost for certain that's the same buck that I tagged on day two. And uh, on day two, I'll just tell you guys a little bit about the hunt on day two because I didn't get any of the hunt on video because it happened so fast. Like I wasn't expecting it. So basically on day two, when uh, we were riding around, we saw this really nice buck and he crossed the little path that we were on. So we started going towards him and he literally had to be maybe three to 400 yards away. And we kept inching closer and closer to him. And my guide had a decoy that looks like a doe. So that kept making him stop long enough for me to get set up on him. And I think I'm almost for certain we were at like 300 yards. And uh, he kept looking at that decoy and it kept making him stop and turn around just long enough for me to set up on him. And the first shot, my rifle is set, it's zeroed in at 100 yards. The problem horn was at 300, which was much further than I'm used to shooting at. So the first shot, shot right over him. Cause my guy told me to aim, you know, a little bit high because he was at 300 yards. First shot, shot right over him. So the problem horn starts running. We start running towards him with the decoy. And the decoy is the only thing that saved us because he kept turning around trying to see what was going on. So when I finally got him, he was a little bit over 300 yards. It made it, it might have been around like maybe 320 yards, 310 yards, something like that. But that's the furthest shot I ever made. Second shot dropped him instantly. And the only reason I'm telling you guys about that is because I didn't get all of that on video. I got most of the first day on video, but the second day it happened so fast, I just didn't get it on video. But anyway, I'm gonna stop talking and bring you guys that video. And after this one, I'll bring you another video of us field dressing this pronghorn, getting them processed, caped, all of that good stuff. And I have some footage of some elk too, because we saw a ton of elk and we saw mule deer, everything. It was an amazing trip. I saw all kinds of stuff that I've never seen in my life. So <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I'll probably go back next year if possible. I got to see you. I have to work some things out. But anyway, it's Blood Swinging Gears 87. And this is my 2018, 2018 pronghorn hunt in Springer, New Mexico. Check it out. I think you guys are going to like it. Alright, we've spotted the first goat for the day. First of the mm -hmm.
just see how they've been looking for a good look at the car. You can see actually more in the way out of here. You can see where the car is looking at the way out of here. Right there. You can't tell how good it is.
So we finally got one today. It's my first antelope ever. Thanks to these guys right here. <laughs> the true grit outfitters. Get him up front and I'll hold him up for you. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, top that one anytime soon. <laughs> he has what, six and a quarter inch bases? Six and a quarter inch bases. He's a stud. And we are out here in beautiful Springer, New Mexico. On the Dos Rios Ranch. And I believe the shot I made was a little over 300 yards. Oh, Never made a shot that far in my life. So <laughs> I actually missed him the first time, but then we caught up to him and the second shot dropped him instantly. I'm happy. <laughs> you have it, I'll be the picky with it. second day of the hunt we yep. got this one down um we were out here maybe an hour and when we first pulled up we saw several pronghorn it might have been you guys think we saw maybe 20 20 yep. or so Never been them. they were way out and it looked like they were a little spooked but we uh we kept riding and we just happened to come across this one and we got out and used the decoy and uh started working towards them and I think the decoy helped us to gain some ground on him because he kept stopping and turning around, trying to figure out what was going mm -hmm. on. And uh, the first shot I made, I believe the first shot was probably around 300 yards mm -hmm. too, but I totally missed him. And he went maybe, I wonder how far you think he went? Uh, <laughs> at least another 100 yards or more. And we, we stayed after him and he stopped again and gave me a broadside shot. And I took it at 300 yards and here we are. Dropped him dead. He never moved. First pronghorn antelope. My first western trip. And on day two, <laughs> got nice. this this monster right here. Nice and <laughs> nice and cool this morning. Uh, that is a stud yep. of a goat right there. Big goat. So thanks to True Grit Outfitters. I appreciate you guys. It's been a hell of a trip. <laughs> <laughs> This may have been the buck you were after yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. Could have been. We're in the same general area. Yeah, I think Could have been the, the same. We saw, um, this might be the one we saw yesterday morning. Yeah, yeah I think it is. Yeah. That's 16 inch goat. That's 16 inches? <laughs> That's a 16 inch goat. I'm gonna tell you something, David. That thing might make Boone and Crockett. It may do it. Holy cow! He curls so much you don't you don't realize, you don't realize how it. big he is. Put your hand right there in that curl. Right, right there. Yeah, right, right up here. Right up here. Oh, 15 in a. It's 15 on this side. He's 16 on this other side. And that's just rough. Oh my gosh, uh, Buffett. That is one. That's, that's he's even bigger than we thought he was. Three and a half up here on top, almost three and three quarters. I'm gonna show them the countryside back here a little bit, like the mountain that's back here. Kind of show you the country that's wide open. He's almost got five inch cutters. Oh my gosh. A little over <laughs> four and three quarters. There's how vast it is out here. The elk are down there in that canyon area. We saw some elk this morning, some bulls.
What do you think, Lafayette? It's not going to be your last Western game, big game hunt, is it? Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, can you hear I gotta, me? I got to come back and get one of those bull elk. Absolutely, elks, <laughs> one of those big bull elk. That's a 16-inch goat on one side. <laughs>